Hello, mga summoners. Welcome back as we head into the Green Alo Collegiate League 2017 Summer Term for the Metro West Conference. Of course, this is powered by Lenovo Challenge, let me know. But before we get into the nitty gritty of all these games today, kami mga game casters ngayon araw na to. Arctic at Mr. Time, of course, with me is Chisto. And there you have it. I mean, with this game that we're going into, Polytechnic University of the Philippines versus De La Salle. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the impact <laughs> of the upcoming game. I mean, DLSU already secured their place in the knockout stage, whereas PUP is trying to secure their, theirs as well. So, it'll be interesting how, how these two teams match up, given that Lasal is a higher seed mm. at the moment. So, let's see how this game will pan out. So, there you have it, folks. I mean, what's really interesting here is the Lasal University, I gotta say, definitely one of the teams that I considered at the as far as my own personal tier list, like kind of at the top, probably right under FU. But we'll just have to see. I mean, going into this game right now, they really want to try to push for as... Because in this scenario, I believe that they'll most likely make playoffs if they pull this off. But it's all about the seeding at this point, whether or not they want to have it a little bit easier or harder going into the knockout stage. But going into the pick and ban right now, Looks like Polytechnic University of the Philippines is going to be taking away the Jana as well as the Kogma wall for DLSU. Going to ban out Tristana and the Luna. Yeah, smart Ooh. choice here by PUP. Target banning Compton and Gates. I mean, Compton has been a really good core for DLSU to play around, and they've been really playing well with these picks. And taking away Jana from games gives takes away a lot of the safety provided by Jana to Compton. So, really good bats there. There you have it. Tarek and Sajuani going to be taken out as well from both Levi and Gaines respectively. So looks like PUP lock in nila tong Shogath potentially. Is that going to be a lock in? We'll just have to see. Kind of hovering over. Really want to take that into priority for themselves. Looks like indeed that will be the first pick on that Shogath. Yeah, so interesting choice here, prioritizing the Cho'Gath, considering blind picking Cho'Gath is a rather uh, con really confident move, where there were other picks that were potentially better, such as this Rakan picked up by Dealers, or the Jarvan, which could be flexed into the jungle. So, interesting to see what PUP's priorities are. So there you have it, Rakan and Nidalee as well. Going to be taken in response. Interesting Nidalee pick actually prioritized within this first rotation here. Yeah, Nidalee, not a very popular jungler in the current meta teams competitively would prefer using a tank as their jungler, but I think Skype is a good Nidalee player, so let's wait and see how this pick translates into what DLSU's game plan is. So there you have it. I mean, what's interesting is that whenever I think Nidalee, as far as within the context of OCL, I'll always go back to the Summer 2016 Champions, TIP, where Mayao was kind of known for that Nidalee and was I, it's, it was pretty much a picker ban. Yeah, but I wonder where Mayo is now. Where yeah. he is now. I mean, he hasn't been playing much in competitive. In LCL. Ah, in LCL. LCL. So there you have it, folks. For PUP, just to sum up what they've locked in, Kha'Zix and Morgana going to be taken for themselves. Tapos naman, yung Nar going to be taken before we head into the second banning phase. Let's go ahead and touch on it real quick. They have been thrown out. Sai and Twitch going to be banned out. Two ADCs. Banned from DLSU and the Cinder and Vladimir for mid lane. So, two bans for Marion. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, signature picks for players. Yeah, you mentioned Meowth Nidalee. We have Beast Boys Morgana. Mm. Very, very popular pick for him. And he's known for it around the competitive scene. And for DLSU, they pick up a, nar a classic counter to the Cho'Gath matchup. Able to kite Cho'Gath around in a really good matchup for DLSU. And picking Kalista as well. I mean, Kalista is a high priority pick among other regions in competitive. Not much here because. 
it's very rare to see a good Callisto player here in the Philippines. Like, I can only name Birmo for one. Mm. He's a really good Callisto player. He used to play for DLS here. Within LCL, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, but for PUP, Caitlyn Cassiopeia going to be locked in ooh, for Enju and for Marion, respectively. And of course, it is going to be the Galio actually taken by DLSU. So with these compositions kind of in there right now for both sides, I mean... Yeah, a lot of engage for DLSU with the Kalista and the Rakan. It's a really good combo where you chain the Fate Skull with the Quickness. Just a ton, tons of CC chains for their comp. And as for PUP, there's a lot of range and late game in their competition. So let's see how both teams execute the game plans they have drafted for here. So there you have it, folks, with PUP and DLSU locking in their picks. Think you guys, Sino Ang Mananalo dito sa dalawang to will DLSU put themselves one step further into securing a higher seat in the knockout stage? Or will PUP try to fight for their lives in this case? Because every game counts for PUP. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken as well, DLSU, if they win this, they can still potentially force a first place tiebreak with FEU if they do ah. win their match, their upcoming match. So I really wish we get to see DLSU and FEU play more games because, as you said, they are the top, they look like the top teams in yeah. the Metro West Conference. And seeing two good teams play in Battle Late Out is really good. That would make for a really great final. But another question here is that. Are they going to allow us that opportunity to potentially see them in the finals? Or let's say they do make it to playoffs. What they do kind of want to avoid is, although with FEU standing right now, I highly doubt it will be a scenario where they'll be second and third respectively. But I guess in this case, DLSU as well, they want to win all the remaining games so that they don't fall potentially all the way to the fourth seed which is something that we don't want to happen. But thinking on nothing, guys, as we head into the game, once again, this is Polytechnic University of the Philippines versus De La Salle University for game four of today's Garena Law Collegiate League. Let's head into the action. Yeah, so it seems like with the Morgana pick, it's a classic beast invade. Like, <laughs> whenever they get Morgana, just have to invade. And DLSU with a good read, of course, being such a popular pick by Beast Boy, they already know the invade is coming. So they ward and they position themselves properly and they prevent any deaths from happening. Ito yung mga tipong pag na either napag-aralan or if you know this player for certain habits, you'll kind of be prepared and you'll manage to anticipate these type of things. Yeah, so let's head into the matchup for the solo laners here. I mean, Nar into Cho'Gath. Nar is going to push into Cho'Gath being ranged, and Cho'Gath has no choice but to really just get as much farm and not fall behind super... That, not fall behind that much to the Nar. As for mid lane, Galio isn't going to take a lot of damage from Cassio. I mean, he's going to build into that MR, that Abyssal Mask potentially, and... Galio does have ample wave clear to fight the push of this Cassio, but during the early game, so a lot of safety in the lanes of DLSU. So there you have it, folks, with things going on right now, though. Both junglers transitioning towards the top side, interesting enough. Whether or not this will lead to potential ganks, that's something we'll look into later on. But for DLSU, with their composition, let's go ahead and talk about win conditions, though, with what they can accomplish early game and what may be problems for them later on. And as for PUP, their win condition here is they need to get Cassio, Marian's Cassiopeia to at least three, three to four items so that she can potentially turn into a late game hyper carry. Also the Caitlyn, I mean, they can siege really well with this composition. And let's see, in the jungle matchup, Levi will always be able to 1v1 Skype in the jungle because Kha'Zix Sintanilly is a really good match. So let's see how this pan, but it looks like there a is a pause. A little bit of a pause, but no worries. Looks like we'll head right back into the game. A little bit of a small thing, but ooh, first blood actually going to Levi right there. Going in on Skyf's jungle. Yeah, like I said, Kha'Zix into Nidalee is a really good matchup for the Kha'Zix when it comes to those little 1v1 jungle skirmishes because Nidalee just doesn't deal enough damage that fast to Kha'Zix, whereas Kha'Zix can instantly burst down Nidalee with the isolation damage. There you have it. Definitely a good start here for Levi. Heal being popped up by Compte, though, taking so much damage. Forced to flash as both summoners go down, but that's going to be the Dark Binding onto Gaines. A little bit of a hold there, but gets rooted, taking so nice much damage combo. as well. But Beast in exchange 
a little bit on the lower end of HP, but I'd say that definitely one of the favorite PUP. A good trade from PUP, abusing the range on their champions, because Kalista and Rakan won't be able to outrage a Caitlyn Morgana lane, so let's head into replay. I think this is Levi killing this guy. Ooh. That was Skyfe just being in position. And the isolation, absolutely beautiful for him right there. And overall, I mean, PUP across the board looks like they're doing pretty well. And but then again, what I'm really looking forward to seeing here, Chris, is oh, okay, Andrew getting the kill on to on there. But here comes spotting strife within the vicinity. Misses out on landing that spear though. But yeah, as I was saying, what I'm kind of looking forward to seeing from PUP, because guy nga nang sinasabi natin pa ulit ulit sa mga past games nila. Without a doubt, individually magaling sila. Pero kaya somewhat expected na early game. Di ako nagugulat na nakakahataw sila. Pero going into that mid and late game, dun parang sila nagkakaroon ng problema na yung synergy. Wala masyado because yung individual prowess nila hindi na yung translate into the team synergy that they need to win games. I think that's just because of the lack of games they actually play together. Because mm -hmm. of course, being LCL players, they have school, they have <laughs> other priorities, and they would rarely get to practice as five. Where that where having a good shot caller on your team comes in. Uh, having an in-game leader, and I think PUP does a decent job, but not as great as how LaSalle plays their macro game. Indeed. And we'll just have to see. I mean, I really didn't really want to discount DLSU just yet because I'm looking forward to seeing if whether or not heading into the mid-game once we hit into those bigger fights. Baka yun yung maging um, turning point nila. Or even when it comes to having much more control over this map, whether in terms of vision or in terms of objectives. So, tignan natin. Tignan natin. So, right now, a huge CS gap in the jungle. I think... Uh, Skyf going for that gank bot lane which failed, put him behind. As where Lee by opted to farm since he already got the kill, because Kha'Zix isn't really gonna opt to gank during this early game when his lanes are this safe or this uh, comfortable. I mean, he doesn't have to gank bot lane because Caitlyn and Morgana are gonna bully that losing lane from DLSU. So Liba has free reign over what he wants to do on the map, whether or not he wants to counter jungle, whether he wants to farm his own jungle or gank. Interesting here though, looking at the CS differences, I'd say Marion kind of a leg up versus Spring here, but you can't really see the same for top, 35 to 43. But if you look at Marion go, just getting some decent harass there on Spring. Yeah, at this stage in the game, Cassiopeia is still gonna deal damage to Galio, but at some point, once Galio potentially buys Adaptive Helm, Ooh. the DPS coming from Marion will get significantly lower, and I really want to wait and see how DLSU plans to use their, their comp strengths, especially in the team fights, where the amount of AoE and CC they can lay down on the comp of PUP is gonna really help them, give them an edge in these fights. Because on PUP's comp, it's only the black shield that's gonna protect the carry, and that's a lot of CC, and can easily be broken by the Galio. Ooh, Felix though, catching out strike with a little bit of a fight for, ooh, okay. Almost thought that that smite, because of missing out on that slither of health, might have gone to PUP, but luckily he did get the auto attack in for that security. So around a 2k gold lead here, and I wonder if PUP wants to make a move for this Mountain Drake, because their mid lane and bot lane currently have pressure, they can easily rotate and collapse onto that, and potentially secure a good Drake for their comp. I mean, Caitlyn is one of the best AD carries at Sieging, given her range, and if you pair that with a Rapid Fire Cannon, towers are gonna fall super fast. But let's see how DLSU reacts. I mean, Sky being this behind, it's gonna be really hard for him to look for a gank. So just wait and see what happens. There you go, folks. Kuno still on our scoreboard. Favoring PUP. We'll just have to see if this momentum keeps up for them. Still a little bit of awkwardness that happens to them in the later parts of the game. But we'll see if within the week that we haven't seen them, if they could kind of pull things back together. That was themselves. close. Whew. I think that if that landed, Gulpi could have potentially solo killed Felix. I mean, nice flash for him to dodge the rupture, but just the inches of the hitbox not hitting the boomerang onto Felix, which should have parked Hyper and gave him enough move speed to actually auto after that, would have potentially killed Felix, but mm. finding Lance. Finding Lance can't follow up just yet, though. And interesting to note, though, Comte is near level 6, so we are nearing all ultimates up across both sides here. But Strife at the same time, kind of... Struggling to keep, pick up the slack here versus Levi here. Aside from being down a kill, he's also 
40 to 19, that's pretty substantial. Yeah, but look at the jungle items here. Sky prioritized vision, whereas Levi opted to go for the more snowball item, the Caulfield's Warhammer, which I think is a, a fine choice considering he is ahead in the jungle matchup and his legs are playing extra safe, warding and playing properly, but the gank mid lane got Ooh, Landing on to Marion right there, forced to flash away. Actually looks like he'll be able to kill the one to Stripe. Actually does push his ult coming in, but won't be enough to save his jungler. Yeah, the cleanse there coming in clutch, removes the taunt CC and flashing out of the burst damage from Sky. Marion just styling on the members of DLSU there. Yeah, fancy, fancy right there, and that will be the signal for PUP to go for that mountain bridge right there. Looks like Levi really going at it. Has to be careful though. Taking chunks and chunks, but looks like they'll be able to do just fine. Strike is down, but still looks like Marion will be assisting. Para masuking ayang mountain bridge. Levi gonna jump out, leaving it to Marion. But that will be the first dragon of the game going to Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Yeah, bonus damage to objectives. Uh, I think this is a really good Drake for PUP because we've seen a lot of teams picking up early Mountain Jakes, rush down a Baron with the Cassiopeia because th those Twin Fangs will deal a lot of damage plus the isolation damage of course from Kha'Zix it'll be really easy for them to transition into an early Baron if their lead keeps growing at this pace 3-0 right now PUP definitely great almost across the board, almost but still a, diff a little bit of a different story if we're going to talk about Felix and Gopi here towards the top side. CS difference 64 to 83 right now. So slowly growing in numbers. And interesting to note, opposite sides happening as far as builds. A little bit more tank here for Felix with a more damage for Gopi. Looks like they'll be going in on the Felix. Those guys goes in, gets knocked up, but still that doesn't matter. Gopi gets him back into death range and Gopi secures the kill. Oh. No, that was actually Skyf that gets it. Yes, yes. Good punish there by Skyf and good gank coming from the members of the DLSU, punishing the Cho'Gath for not having Flash. And a really smart choice of gank there, considering that Gulpi had the naturally winning win matchup. Really good choice by Skyf. That puts him back a bit into this game. So there you have it. First kill into the pocket of De La Salle University. So good capitalization right there by the top player in coordination with the jungler dark binding not quite connecting onto compto there but still that's just moments of opportunity that beast is trying to seek in order to get further damage onto the bot lane of dlsu yeah so right now what he has to do in order to execute their combo is given that they already have a lead they need to avoid dying in lane especially their winning lanes and just bully these bully their winning matchups because DLSU won't be able to do anything realistically here. There we go. Still, I mean, oh, Pompe almost getting the cancel out on that recall from Enju, but still here we're seeing a Rift Herald take coming in from Liba. He is just so it like a god. This Rift Herald is going to be able to take it Outer Turret potentially gonna really open up the map for PUP. And once PUP's members are able to move around the map, they have to be careful because DLSU has a lot of engage and the global pressure from the Galio. So once they begin rotating, trying to take down these upper turrets, they need to be extra careful of how they position themselves. Come to think of it, we're gonna be talking about engage. De La Salle University from what I see here, actually has a lot more options as far as getting some initiates onto PUP. While PUP, not really as much, I'd say. If you're gonna look at who could potentially start fights, ooh, Dark Binding though, connecting there onto games. The trap there, not not proccing fast enough in order to chain the CC, but like you said. Oh, but still, here comes Skype. We see a fight, a lot of damage though, going onto games. Andrew getting the kill. Comte. Kind of caught between these two members of PUP, but Enju getting dived in by Sky. Sky trying to get the auto attack in, gets the heal to save himself. And here's a lot happening for DLSU. Levi taking so much damage. Spring, unfortunately, not able to follow up, but here comes Mario to try to salvage his members. That's two members of DLSU trying to run this out, though. Felix continuing the chase, flashes in onto Spring. They are continuing. Will they get them to man knock up? That's Felix getting the kill onto Spring. Gulp be forced to flash away. And that will end in a 1 for 2 in favor of 
Yeah, five man collapse onto the bot lane from both teams ends in a one for you in favor of PUP. And I think this is good proactivity coming from DLSU, but I think they timed it off as Gulpi wasn't in Megadar, but finding hits here. Ooh, not up there. Gulpi does manage to jump out though. Charm coming in from games. Ah, this guy manages to secure the kill. Looks like he was trying to run this out very low on Mana. Might have overstayed their welcome here. Gulpi gets the kill. Yeah, nice turn from DLSU, and I think PUP overreaching, they're not respecting the amount of engage that come out from the comp of DLSU. So really nice read by DLSU, knowing they can take a fight, considering that PUP lacked some major cooldowns they need to actually uh, combat the members of DLSU. Such a shame they weren't able to push that turret down in time. It looks like PUP might beat them to the punch. Or rather, DLSU, because they are pushing out towards bot now, and still Beast trying to make his way there. Oh, Levi, though, was in the vicinity. Gonna try to defend this, and I think he'll be able to do just fine in doing so. So, still no turrets taken just yet. Looks like everything's good. Safe and sound as far as the spirits. Yeah, so like you said, with PUP's comp, they don't have a proper engage tool. They only have the Dark Binding or potentially Cho'Gath Rupture to start fights. So they have to really, really mind what, how they're positioning this. They don't want to clump up versus this Rakan Galio or Nar combo. They really need to be careful while going for these series, even though they are ahead. I mean, so much protection for Compte going into these fights later on. And overall, I mean, so long as... Well, the good thing is that Compte not quite there in terms of where he's at right now. 0 and 2 on this Callista versus a 2 1 Caitlyn. So that does grant him a little bit of leverage as far as that Callista not really hurting as much just yet. But we'll just have to see Charm coming in onto two members of PUP. Beast taking so much damage right there. Are they going to continue? Andrew getting knocked up right here. These are three members of DLSU. Converging double kill for Comte. I take that back. Comte back in the game. Yeah, that definitely pulls DLSU back in the game. Tying up the kills. I mean, Comte well played. They're getting the rent stack onto targets and blasted to get the double kill. Really good engage from Gains and PUP just... When DLSU upped their tempo of play once they got their engage tools, PUP just looked out of sorts, not being able to react fast enough, and it, the goal lead is now in the hands of DLSU. So there you have it, folks. And man, this is something that PUP has to look out for because if Compte really gets things going with such a solid front line and a great lineup to defend him, then that's where things will get really, really tricky. But of course, ladies and gents, for those of you that are just tuned in, you are guys once again watching the Green Alo Collegiate League. Of course, this is powered by Lenovo Challenge. What do you know? You are with Art Cathy Service and with me is Chisto. We'll be getting back into the game in just a little bit from what you've seen there thus far. I mean, yeah, so far, oh. DLSU fighting back from their early game pickups, really clawing their way back. And it's interesting that they still get they're still composed even though they were down that much in the early game. And looks like this game will be really back and forth if PUP decides to up their tempo as well <laughs> and match the LSU in terms of macro and, and let's get back into the game. There you go. Looks like Blue Team actually securing second Drake of the game, PUP. So that will be an Infernal Drake. So much damage for them, I gotta say. They got a Mountain Drake, Protected. Raw damage in itself coming in from Infernal, I mean... That'll work pretty good for them. Yeah, did Levi steal that? It's actually a good question. I think DLSU were doing that and Levi stole it. Ooh, looks like a little bit of fight here happening between Felix and Gopi. Felix taking so much damage though, Gopi trying to take it out. It looks like that'll be indeed another kill for the top laner of DLSU. Yeah, great solo kill there from Gopi, abusing his winning matchup. And Cho'Gath just, just gonna get bullied by this Nar in a 1v1 situation. Ooh, Beast getting a cancel on Gopi's recall there. Levi now within the vicinity to secure that kill and down, 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 Nar goes. Okay, one for one trade there. Good read by Beast Boy. Ooh, a lot of members here towards DLSU. Sky is gonna be going in. Levi taking a lot. Sky getting the kill. Charm onto Beast right there. That's gonna be a heavy dive as DLSU emerges on top. Double yeah. kill for Sky. Beast Boy baiting his teammate Levi there to go in for the uh, to hop in and hit uh, Comte there because 
you, you aren't supposed to do those kinds of engages without vision of the entire enemy team, not respecting the numbers advantage that DLSU had there. And GUP, they're just falling apart here. They look, they look a little bit flustered. In fact, this is what I've been talking about going into this mid game. The synergy that the LSU has and the overall macro, as Chiefsto has been saying here, really starting to manifest for them, in my opinion. And, and these mistakes from PUP, somewhat, this is what I've been worrying about. It's somewhat expected, and these are the type of things that ideally they should be correcting going into week three, but from what we're seeing here, it looks like that's not really the case for them. Okay, let's head into this mid game and talk about what core items have been completed. Abyssal Mask for the Galio, gonna give him more safety. And Blade of the Ring can complete it for Kong. They're gonna hit, help them take uh, potential Barons in the creature faster. And as for PUP, Infinity Edge already complete for Enju. And interesting choice by the Cassiopeia. Going for the first item of Abyssal Mask. I do not think that is the optimal build for Cassiopeia at the time. Because a few patches ago, there have, there's been a change to Abyssal Mask where you need more AP for it to be more effective and it isn't really the optimal rush item for Marion. So interesting choice here. There you have it. 7 and 9 right now. DLSU. Five people converging on this middle turret. Gulpy kind of in the back line. Goes back to Nina for him though. That's going to be Mayasma. Does not prevent Swains from getting that escape though. Just kind of walks out and... Right into Skype. Yeah, PUP needs to be careful when rushing in towards DLS because DLS you can instantly hit the go button, hit the trigger, and just instantly turn a fight that PUP wants in DLSU's favor. Especially with the Rakan engage, but Levi looking for Ooh, Levi has so much damage onto gains. Fancy footwork out of there for this Rakan though. Yeah, Rakan's such a mobile support. He's the most mobile support yeah. out there. <laughs> very slippery to cat very slippery. I mean, with all, even with all that damage coming in from Levi, but looks like he found a different target in the form of Nidalee. Actually gets the steal on this blue buff, though. That's really not going to mean much as far as what the Ooh, mine has to looks be like Levi smells blood in the form of Sky. Sky flashes away, but that doesn't matter. Shut down onto that Nidalee, but there's a fight happening towards stop lane. Looks like Beast will able to escape just fine. Felix getting the kill onto Compte. They smell blood in spring. He's just kind of walk away, but still. Across the board, that's freaking three deaths for the LSU. Yeah, I wonder how that fight in the mid lane started. Just PUP knowing they don't have proper engage to They get a catch onto the members of the LSU, and it might just translate into a Baron, which will give PUP a grip on this game. Wow, gutsy call coming in from PUP. Then and it goes on so fast. Baron, but then again, they have the Mountain Drake and the Inferno Drake, so yeah, they have an ass. Pretty good damage, and Cassiope at the same time. Gopi and Spring gonna try to stop them. That's the stun, though. Onto Gopi, forced to flash away. Spring getting the kill onto Beast. They're gonna try to get this fight oh. into there, and actually gets the kill. Gopi, oh man, Spring though will be going down, but still. With that Baron taken, I'm actually wondering how many members of DLSU have that buff. I think that's all three members that have just recently survived. Man, Scythe though getting the kill onto Enzo, taking a lot though from three members of PUP under duress. Shutdown coming in from Mariam Comte with gains though. Will he be able to kite for his carry? But no, actually gets eaten by the Cho'Gath. And this will potentially be darn it. Ace and missing out on that Baron steal. Why is DLSU engaging? They already secured the Baron for their team. Disaster shot already for PUP not being able to secure that. Of course, Gulp is stealing that, but DLSU overreaching there and they lose the Baron as soon as they get it. Damn, that was so, so unfortunate right there. That would have granted DLSU a lot of options here had they been able to at least first serve that Baron on maybe if you really missed out on all those members, at least just one, but the fact that everybody lost it now, man. Gulpy though, gonna get chased out by Mario and Spring. Gonna show him out a bit with the Wings of War. Yeah, and as for PUP not being able to secure that, they have a lot of damage on there, but just go over a replay here. And let's see how Gulpy steals this for this uh, hop onto Baron. He just stomps on Baron and secures it. Oh, there we go. Beast was oh. tough. 49 HP, that close. Woo. And Levi had a like 600 damage smite. That was... You can't oh. be missing smites like this in a competitive match. It was definitely awkward. It's such a clutch play from DLSU there.
Whew. Just the margins on that, man. I know. that, And that was a really weird thing, though, because he had quite the hefty smite. And the fact that only 45 HP and that one single basic attack coming in from Gulpy, man. I don't think he was expecting to secure that himself. But looks like that's a four-man stun off the members of DLSU. But Felix really going to go in hard. That's going to be two members of DLSU down. Three members trying to run this out. Gains getting the charm onto Levi. But still, the rest of DLSU trying to run away. Gulpy knocks him away. But no, PUP still securing the kill. That's three members of DLSU down. Gains trying to run this out. But Levi getting the kill. Four for nothing in favor of PUP. Yeah, that petrifying gaze coming from Marin. Really carrying the fight for PUP. And they crush the members of DLSU, which could potentially lead it to two more towers and the lead for PUP. I mean, man, these fights, whew, the margins in these fights, really, really good. There we go, another turret, inner bottom lane turret taken down by PUP. They're gonna go for this mid lane as well. 19 and 12, and the gold deficit now leaning towards 4,000, make that 5,000 now in favor of PUP. And it's such a shame. Yeah, Such a shame. There's so many things that the LSU could do with this composition that they have. But let's go ahead and check out the replay. Yeah, let's look at the flash petrifying gaze stuns for and Levi with the flank just kills Compton instantly at the start of the fight. And at this point, even with all the CC coming out from the LSU's comp, their DPS in Compton is down. Their comp is designed to protect Compton. They have to rely on Compton to carry, but if Compton is there, their comp is near useless. I mean, this NAR, the NAR, even if it landed on four people, it doesn't mean anything without no, without follow up and clean up from the rest of PUP. Man, PUP having a ball right now against DLS U. And yeah, things right now, man. Martin just really popping off on this casualty right now. Six one and six, and across the board, even I mean, even Felix. I mean, he was struggling against Ogopi in the early game, but five three now on this Trogath. Really big comeback, I gotta say. Yeah, so it looks like even though PUP looked a bit flustered, after that dragon fight, they look really good right now and poised to take this game from DLSU and secure their spot in the knockout. They really wanted at it. Yeah, so since DLSU is behind there, what they want to do is they need to look for a proper engage onto the carries of PUP and they need to protect Compton from Levi. But if PUP plays their comp properly and positions well in these teams, but I don't see DLSU coming back from this game. No, not at all. Looking at things, too. PUP just trying to establish control over the jungle side. With only DLSU. Here's just being thrown. Not really substantial as far as damage dealt. Still, blue buff gonna be going to Marion. QSS already completed for injury. They're gonna give him a lot of safety in these fights. As for the side of DLSU, Frozen Heart completed by Spring and the Abyssal Mask. 19 and 12 right now on Scoreboard. Still a stable 5,000 gold to visit in favor of PUP. Things are definitely looking good for them right now. Shoving in DLSU into protecting their inhibitor turrets right now. What will PUP do? We have two waves pushing out towards this mid lane as well as bot lane Andrew trying to get as much damage as he can onto this turret. Is DLSU going to try something here though? We'll just have to see that inhibitor turret now at half of its health. Yeah, Felix is going to have to go back and clear that wave in the top lane that is pushing for DLSU. He does have teleport up in, in case a fight breaks out, but at some point while PUP is seen, DLSU has to pull the trigger. They have to take the risk and take a fight and take the game to PUP and gain control of the game back for their team. Are you going to try it though? I mean, Felix here, even though he's going for this defense towards the top side, in order to prevent that wave from pushing, teleport is up for him though. So if ever fights do break out, it would be an easy um, reunion with the rest of PUP and thing. Oh, Levi oh, though going to go in onto three members of DLSU taking a lot. Compton getting the kill, not exactly the best move right there. So Levi Ooh. down for 40 seconds here, and Baron is spawning soon, and DLSU has Kalista. Even with the Cho'Gath, even with a thousand damage. Even with a thousand true damage uh, feast, Kalista can out damage that with the rent. And looks like DLSU want to go for that or push this mid lane. Why is Levi face checking at this stage of the game? Ooh. Critical error there. Indeed. Especially within Uncharted territory for PUP. Not really having vision, but still is 
that's gonna be the reinitiate. Felix coming in from the back line, though. Teleport as well. Coming in from Goku. Looks like he's using a 4v5 happening. Will Goku try something? Will he get members of GUT? No, looks like PLSU playing a little bit more passive. Felix okay. getting the kill on the gates as the rest of PLSU gonna try to back it off, getting the knockup onto members of PUP. Felix quite low, though, will be forced to back away as they will content themselves with that one kill on the game. Felix incredibly tanky there, taking damage from four members of PLSU, but like I said, DLSU's comp is built around comp. The comp they has to deal damage here, but DLSU chunk after that fight. PUP has resources to take this Baron down, but they have had hiccup in the Baron, but let's see if Dolby can use the steal. Ooh, not quite happening though, but looks like that was all the Skype getting taken down. Fortunately, not able to secure the steal, and that will be five members of PUP actively with that Baron bump. It's yeah, be scary. Lee by redeeming himself from his earlier <laughs> missed smite. Is it gonna happen again though? Yeah, it's now with this. Ooh, it's getting taunt though. Three members of the LSU gonna try to get in on him, but no. Looks like Andrew will support his jungler this time around, getting the kill onto Gaines. Yeah, so with the Baron buff now and the in Gaines down for the LSU, they do not have that initial engage with the Rakan. PUP can just push these towers and tells you have no counterplay to this. Caitlyn will shred these towers, especially with the headshot proc working on the towers now. And this mountain drake, they're gonna take down so many structures from DLSU's base and PUP back in the driver's seat again. Whew. This is a hefty way pushing in. Looks like PUP, they have a lot of options here with this Baron buff. Are they gonna transition? Looks like there's a ping for the dragon. It is live. It is just a cloud drake. So we're gonna help them uh, rotate around the map, mm. take these towers, but I think the reason why DLF is in such a big goal right now is because they overextended for that fight when they got the Baron kill, overreaching when you secure the key objective in the game. I mean, denying Baron from PUP Siege Comp is really important, but now that PUP has the Baron, they have tempo, they can look to push either top or bot for DLF, and it looks like they are setting up for that now and as for DLSU they need to find a miracle engage in order to get back into this game this is so tricky for them and from what we've been seeing here even with DLSU trying to seek opportunities Felix is going hard in onto whoever he could chomp off the face of the earth or in this case some of the drift so yeah, even though Gulpi had the lead over Felix PUP made the map move, enough map movements to avoid the 1v1 between Felix and Goku in solo lane. Because if you leave those champions in the solo lane, Nar and Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath is just going to lose the 1v1 every time. So knowing that, PU, what PUP did is they opted to move Felix into the lane without the Nar to avoid the matchup. It's a really smart choice. And now Felix has enough tank items to survive long enough. And it looks like there's a fight though. Ooh. A little bit of a hold there onto gains, but no, looks like PUP. I mean, with all members gonna push out this top side, Levi is making his way towards top though. Looks like they want to flank with a blast zone here, of course. Oh, they can go for it. Ooh, Spring coming in from the back line gets the knock in though. Has to be careful though. DLSU, they're seeking home to rock and getting the knock up. But Levi coming in from the back line. Finds blood in the form Pumped of Pompe. Pompe goes down. Spring, the next casual here. The rest of DLSU trying to back away. Looks like Gopi gonna sacrifice himself for the better good, but still gains. Goes down with only Skype, the remaining member. Ladies and gentlemen, PUP coming up on top in a one for four. Yeah, even with Levi going down there. His job is to pop Comte. Comte is down. DLS you just loses any team fight. And with with uh, four members down from DLS, it looks like it will be the game from PUP with an excellent, excellent flank from Lee by taking down the carries. The carry for DLSU. So there you have it, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, looks like PUP managing to pull themselves together for a victory. And that will be a win for them in week three of the Green Alola Collegiate League. Good game, great game from PUP. That Ooh. secures their spot in the knockout, I believe. And as for DLSU, their hopes of... I think they still have a chance of potentially going for a tiebreaker for first, but we have to wait and see how FEU's games go. <laughs> so there you yeah, have... For MVP for PUP, I think Levi. Oh he yeah, definitely. Is, in these team fights, his job was to take down the Kalista, and he did it completely, even with the hiccup in Baron. Like the margin for that was really close to happening. Even though he missed that, he redeemed himself and he carried these team fights for PUP. It's all about the comeback, but looking at the end stats here across the board, 
PUP looking very impressive, I gotta say. Yeah, PUP executing their comp better than the LSU. I mean, the LSU have picked a lot of engage, but then, since Levi got super ahead in the early game, Comte was really not able to do anything. I mean, Kha'Zix's damage is near pointed click, and if you just die in two hits to Kha'Zix, I mean, this comp doesn't really protect you that much. So there you have it, folks. With all said and done, congratulations once again to Polytechnic University of the Philippines taking a win against the La Salle University. Two favorites, I'd say, with high expectations, both teams. But nonetheless, when we come back, we still have quite a number of games ahead. But for the meantime, we have been your caster, Dr. Get the Service Fam, with me is Chiso Ito, Hungarian Alolo Collegiate League, powered by Lenovo Challenge. What you know, we'll be right back, so stay tuned. Baron, but then again, they have the Mountain Drake and the Eternal Drake, so yeah, they have a pass. Pretty good damage, and Cassiopeia at the same time. Gulpi and Spring gonna try to stop them. That's the stun, though. Onto Gulpi, forced to flash away. Spring getting the kill onto Beast. They're gonna try to get this fight oh. into Baron. Actually gets the kill, Gulpi. Oh, man. Spring, though, will be going down, but still. With that damage of DLSU, but Felix really gonna go in hard. That's gonna be two members of DLSU down. Three members trying to run this out. Gaines getting the charm onto Levi, but still, the rest of DLSU trying to run away. Kalki knocks him away, but no, PUP still securing the kill. That's three members of DLSU down. Gaines trying to run this out, but Levi getting the kill. Four for nothing, getting it's the knockout. Out. But Levi coming in from the back line. Finds blood in the form Gulpi of Kalki. Kalki goes down. Spring, the next casual here. The rest of DLSU trying to back away. Looks like Kalki gonna Sacrifice himself for the better good, but still Gaines goes down with only you guys the managing to pull themselves together for a victory, and that will be a win for them into week three of the Green Alloa Collegiate League. Good game, great game from you. Not enough Garena shells to buy the latest League of Legends skin on sale now? Get shells anytime, anywhere with your Globe or Touch mobile number. Go to gamer.com.ph and sign up with your mobile number and enter the verification code you will receive via SMS. Log in and choose the game and pin you want. Check out to purchase the PIN with your load or through your postpaid account and receive the PIN on your phone instantly. Never miss a sale on your favorite League of Legends skins and champions with Gamer. 